What's up everybody? So today I'm just going to render some duck fat and uh, make some of those steak fries that I made in my previous post. Um, I've got this duck fat here from the farmer's market. I really love it. If you're in Atlanta, it's called Decap Farmer's Market or Our World Market. Got some really excellent stuff. But a pound of duck fat mainly costs like $2 and some change. So I'm going to take this, put it in the pot. And what's going to happen is that in the pot, uh, the heat is going to evaporate all the moisture that's within the fat, in the fat cells. So you'll be left with a little bit of a crackling and the rest will be oil. So it'll be all up in there, this nice golden oil. Uh, I'll put it on six. I mean, but obviously you can put it at whatever temperature that you want to help control it. Um, but I'm going to be making these steak fries. I got my two Russell potatoes. That I'm gonna chop up and um, we're gonna go from there all right so first what I like to do is take out the fat and just examine it um, this is to make sure that the animal has been properly cleaned everything is off of it no kind of leftover fur or feather I mean not fur but feathers or down also so occasionally you'll find something like these little balls of something that looks kind of gray uh, but those are called lymph nodes and uh, you have them in your body animals have them in their body and what they do is it's just a little organ or whatnot that helps purify the blood sometimes I found some just attached to my fat so you don't want that at all in your um, in your duck fat you want to make sure that you read that it has a lot of impurities and we want to keep this as clean as possible. So next step after I have examined all my fat to make sure it's free of lymph nodes, I will just throw it in the pot and put a lid on it. It's just that simple. Um, I don't wash my fat for the simple fact it's going to get the oil when you do it. I have done it once and it's all right, but I just feel like the oil when it's rendered out, it doesn't cook as well as it I would like it to. It just seems really soupy. But if I just have the fat on its own, um, it really, you know, it, it really does a lot better. So this batch looks pretty clean. I don't see any kind of leftover feathers or uh, lymph nodes in this. So next step, just throw it in the pot. Okay, so I have the fat in the pot now, and since I warmed it up, I put it on six earlier, but I turned it down to about three and a half because I don't want to cook this. I want it to slowly render out. So it has begun to do that, and from the little bit of moisture that was left on the fat has already started to work. That's why I didn't want to wet this any extra than I had to. Like I said, just take it, put it in the pot, um, seal it up. Sometimes I'd use this little thing here. Uh, it's more of a rubber flap to just put over it. But uh, I think the pot was the pot's original light will still get that rendered out as quick as possible. You can even turn the fire down a lot more, um, just so you don't overcook this. Especially if you know that you're going to be doing something extra, like me over here cutting up the potatoes. So let's get to that. Okay, so now we have. The two Russell potatoes sitting right here. I've already washed them off and to make this process go a little smoother you might want to make sure that your blade is uh, sharp. If you don't have a knife sharpener I'd highly invest in one. Uh, it's about 10 bucks at the store. I don't really know just you know something that's gonna make your something that's gonna make your knife sharp or else this is gonna be a painful process. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just take my potato and cut it in half horizontally. So what I mean by horizontally is that you see how I have the potato horizontal to me. I mean, depending on how you cut, you could say vertical or I say horizontal because that's how I cut it. So you just slice it on down the middle there. And once you have your nice two halves, doesn't have to be perfect, doesn't have to be Chef Ramsay style, um, just Take it, lay the flat parts down, and then take your knife 
and just start cutting decent sized strips along vertically or horizontal depending on how you're cutting but I made four nice strips like this see that so you take that you put it aside now some people don't want their steak fries to be that big and that's all right so choose the right size potato for you you don't want to race with this either you want to get it pretty nice and if these are if these strips here are too big kind of like how mine are you can always take it cut it in a diagonal to kind of make it make it a lot smaller there we go okay so from here i got the um potatoes now laid out on the rack here uh some of the pieces i may have cut a little big and that's all right like if you're that type of person that's really a perfectionist they want to uh, cut them some more shorten them up make them whatever nice little shapes i mean be my guest but to me it's all going down the same way i'm not so much worried about it but it does uh, make it easier to fit into the pot i still have the uh, fat over here rendering as you can see uh, still have it on too, but I'm about to cut that down even more because it's going to take about 30 minutes for this um, to bake in the oven. And why you want it to bake in the oven is just to get it soft enough so that when it hits the oil, um, it can start to actually fry and cook and it gets that flavor in it. Now, you don't have to season it if you don't want to, at least not in this point. Um, you want to let it hit the oil, let the oil work the flavor first. And then uh, I like to season mine at the end. It can be with uh, just simply simply some salt or any other uh, condiment that's in the, or any other seasoning that's in the pantry here. But what I'm going to do is just go ahead and put this in here, 30 minutes. I put it on bake at 350. You don't want it to cook too much. You want it to cook just right, but I'll, for the sake of letting the oven warm up some, I'll even put it on 35. So that 30 minutes, this, um, it's practically done now. If you want to see what it's like, it's pretty much done now, but looks like it has a little more to let go of. So I'm going to let that just sit a little while longer there. all right guys so i am back um i actually turned this off for a little bit while i go and take a shower while i went to go take a shower and um turned on the fries it got done in this state pretty much a little bit after i put the fries in so i didn't think it would be good to let it go any more than it had to but this is the end result this is the uh the actual fat like the, the fat casings the the cells that were left over and inside is the oils so that came out of this I'm actually going to take and strain this here put it over on this napkin let it drain out and I can salt this up later on and um, snack on it it'll make a nice little fatty snack especially if you're doing like the keto carnivore thing or just keto it's a nice addition to um, you know just getting some of that animal fat in your diet so if you haven't made the connection yet have the fries they're done have the oil it's getting back hot and good old-fashioned burger now this one here um, this is actually lamb this time um, I'm fresh out of venison can't wait to get some more but got this lamb at the same place I got the duck fat for about eh, six bucks Got a little more over there. So that's getting done. I'm about to put the fries in. I'll save yourself. I'll save you the uh, boredom as I save myself the editing and uh, just go ahead, get to it, put it in there. No sense in making you wait. 
all right so these are the fries here I probably should have gotten a close-up earlier but you see how it's kind of moist here and some of them even stick to the uh, aluminum foil and that's all right you can easily just peel it off just easily peel them off here but that makes the inside of it soft and chewable because when you put it in the oil the oil by itself isn't gonna cook it you know thoroughly so you want to get that nice soft french fry gooeyness on the inside but you also want to get that crispiness on the outside and that's what the oil is going to help do so I'm going to peel these off and uh, stick them right in the oil ouch still a little hot see fresh steam just going right on off of it but to give you an example of what this is going to be I take this fry there it is gonna fry up there now the oil is still reheating from when I um, you know turned it off earlier but it's just as simple as that just take space them out I'll get that one a little bit let's take it space it out let the oil do its job leave it in there about a good 10 minutes each batch five ten minutes depending on And then take them out, strain them, sauce them up, they're ready to go. Just a little side note out of the way. So I took the uh, duck fat cracklings that was left over from the render and I just put them in this container and salted them up with the uh, Himalayan sea salt. So I mean I can let this sit in the fridge, warm it up a little later, but it serves as a great snack. Like I said earlier for anybody that want to meet their fat content on the keto carnivore or keto diet. Look how rich this is. It's really nice. So, really salty, really fatty. Some good stuff. I love it actually when it's cooked fresh. So, all right. So it's been about ten minutes now since I put the fries in and we have got it getting all golden here really nice and golden so I'm just kind of stirring them up a little bit letting them get a little bit more crisp and then I'm going to transfer it over here to the um, to be drained out and put the next batch in but this batch looks like it's good to go though so I'll take that that it's gotten pretty brown and golden in some areas but I don't want it too cooked just gonna let that strain right over here there we go take over here Get the rest of it out and then just repeat the same method I still have some here that I took out and then some over there I took out just put those on in but I'll let this strain for a minute then toss it in a pot whatever seasoning I choose and add it with the main dish alright so I have the uh, fries here in the bucket and I got my Himalayan pink salt and all I do is just sprinkle some of that on there as much as I like take smack on the lid and then just shake 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 shake, shake the container And I think that's about good. Pop off the lid. And now have a nice mixture of salt and fries. Mm, let's see how it tastes. Mm. It's 
So I'm pretty much used to the taste because, you know, I, I cook this better alternative to any other cooking oils. I'd say I use animal fat. I use pork fat to uh, cook duck fat, fry my fries. I didn't go back to anything else since. Honestly, I was using an air fryer before this, but I was like, you know, I kind of miss the old fashioned way. So I had to do some research on how to just get past all the other synthetic oils that are out there. Uh, highly processed oils. It's really not good for you. And I was like, let me just go back to the old fashioned way. And I found out they actually used to cook food or fry food in duck fat. I tried it. It was like a punch in the face when I first took a bite out of uh, these fries. It was just wow, beyond the flavor. I was like, why don't they make fries like this? But fun fact, they actually do still make fries like this in France using duck fat. Uh, at first I thought it was like, you know, just everything we use, but back in the day, they used duck fat and tallow. McDonald's actually used to use tallow real tallow or beef fat to bake their fries in. That's probably actually how they became famous for their fries before um, you know cheap cooking oils came onto the scene. So you know this makes a world of difference. Guys, don't knock it before you try it. You know, it's just really just something do something new. If you don't know how to cook, just show it you a little something so Man. You know what? There's no sense in me just describing this over the phone. Just try it. You won't be disappointed. You know, I I would actually get the um the duck fat from the local farm that I go to to, but they don't raise duck or sell uh duck fat. So and I don't know anybody that hunt duck. So I really just have to get it from the market, make do. Yeah, probably depends. I, I'm not a, like a nutrition guru or guru or anything like that. Um, but I do believe in just the simplicity of food. Um, going back to the days where things weren't so complicated, you know. And this is one of them. And you will find that it really tastes better. Things, <laughs> our ancestors had it down pat. That's all I gotta say. So, duck fat, steak fries, I'm gonna eat my burger, and peace. got done uh, putting the duck fat in this uh, very durable very very durable jar and this is actually a glass from Tavana um, when I drank some of their tea if you don't know what Tavana is it was a tea store before Starbucks put it out of business and now they just manufacture teas um, you can find it at Target Publix and now some Kroger's if you're here in Georgia um, but I just dropped this on the floor and it didn't break so thank God, um, but this very durable glass, and as you can see, it has a beautiful yellow or gold color to it. Um, so I really like that about the duck fat. It's uh, wow, it's almost very godlike. It's so pretty. But <laughs> yeah, this is pretty much the whole process of rendering duck fat. Um, you just take some fat, put it in a pot and depending on what you're gonna be doing. I like to slow render mine. Uh, some people, they like to just turn it on high, but I slow rendered it this time because I was doing other stuff. And if you just want it to be done fast, uh, you can put it on a higher temperature. But this is the end result. I can use this for up to three times at least. So this will be the first time tonight using it. I can use it like 
two more times but it has a very good shelf life and don't get alarmed when you um start to see it get white and you can probably see these like fluffy i don't know like these uh little fluffy particles that's inside of the duck fat that's just the fat um going from a liquid to a solid state but it does take a while like my last batch of duck fat i had on the shelf maybe like three months before it started doing that and I had like a lot of white particles at the bottom here uh, but that's just the fat turning into a solid state but it doesn't quite get solid uh, that's one thing about duck fat it stays uh, liquid at room temperature quite longer than a lot of other animal fats do so it's perfect at uh, high temperatures you know you cook with it but yeah, that's pretty much the whole process. So thanks for tuning in and uh, hopefully I can make another video that interests you and go from there.